Every idea has an original story. This shoe is just one and the same. We're gonna sit down with Tinker Hatfield about the Air Max one. I'm Robbie Williams, Global Brand Manager of Sneaker Culture and Footwear Curation for the Nike Department of Archives. And this is Tinker Hatfield. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. Take me back to a young Tinker in 1986. Well, I mean, I remember it pretty clearly because I was new to the sneaker business. Nike was actually having a bit of trouble. Their approach to design, which was performance driven and utilitarian in nature was uh, kind of it maybe hit up against a ceiling a little bit. We were out looking to try and find some inspiration. So I was in Paris being an architect. I was just naturally drawn toward looking at architecture. And then I came back and drew this, uh, drew this shoe up. You know, you need to be inspired and you need to get, kind of take, check all those criteria boxes that will help a product work. And then the style has to sort of be blended in while you're doing that. And then what happens? That original inspiration, in this case, building turned inside out. You could just sort of take, and you don't turn everything inside out, but you take a little bit. Uh, we spent a lot of time trying to convince people that this shoe was not only going to work, but it was going to possibly just change the way um, people looked at sneakers. It does reach a bump in a roll and some mm. failure. What was the first signs of that failure? The material wasn't holding up. We found out that, you know, there, there were some issues with the size of the bag. And you know, when you're trying to be the first, you just learn along the way. So you take that moment, you're like, man, well I did it, now I gotta go back to the drawing <laughs> board? Like, like, how do you reprise to get back and refocus. I think that you just have to um, have a, a, an attitude of perfection. You want, you want perfection. You, you know you're not gonna get there, but you want to get there. And I guess having that moment to redesign was a great <laughs> moment to kind of take that process. Well, you know, the, the lab, you know, that represents the, like this scientific side of things. You have to pay attention to what they're telling you because they know you know, a, a lot more about the nature of failure and the consequences too. Being that Nike is a young company at that time, you still have the opportunity to pivot a lot faster where you can try things yeah. and get the feedback and response in a lot faster manner. I think the only way to really do this is to see it in emotion, right? Yeah, let's check it out. Let's have some fun with the board. So, Tinker, tell me, what are we looking at? You know, basically, these are all various iterations of the original design, but mostly what we're talking about here is also this sort of the, the process of improving or changing, you know, as per uh, the wear testing. So. And you can actually see in some of these viewpoints of like the air unit being larger, the air unit being smaller. Mm -hmm. So kind of like the before and after kind of design. Yeah, yeah. Well, well this, this is a very, very early sketch that shows a bigger window and then just a little bit of the midsole kind of coming up and wrapping the upper a little bit so it's stable. Mark and I traveled all over um, Asia looking for meshes and different materials, something that would sort of fit the bill with more breathability and then we had, of course, the synthetic suede for, uh, for durability around that edge and things like that. So we were just, we were all over the place. Well, I think, you know, this is a perfect time to actually look at materials. Yeah. Luckily, we have, you know, the versions of the shoe so we can see the evolution. Yes, look at it. Yeah. So right. here we have a 2013 Air Max OG. From outside looking in at the time, like, when I saw this shoe, I was like, all right, this is the best iteration or interpretation of 1986 in a shoe in 2013. Yeah. And I think it was, you know, ba basically people writing in to us or calling in and telling us, you know, the stuff's not as good as the original stuff. So we, I think there was a better effort here at this time. Let's pull the zero over here and just give me some comparison differences. This design was the first one on the paper. The problem with this was that it was literally from top to bottom, too futuristic. Sometimes it's good though to, as a designer, to go further out and then you can always reel it back or scale it back. And uh, that's exactly what happened here. I think it's time that we look and see where we are now and see what we've done. Yes. Wow. You know, when I look at this in its truest form and in the original colorway, I think of how many times I've seen it in different 
forms and people interpret it different. It's something about this particular one that mm -hmm. still holds true. I think it's a true testament to design and creativity and, and failing forward. Yeah. The reality is that we oftentimes make mistakes or we're in kind of a learning process and you have to then you know be self-critical and go okay we gotta, we gotta make this change and the fact that it's actually gotten better and is more like what you, kind of the original idea was is fabulous tinker this has been incredible yeah. this has been an honor a moment thank you so much for what you've contributed to culture not only in footwear and design but just in sneakers all together thank you it's been great